All right, time for our world famous women's panel. We have Miranda and Bridget with us today. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. We're uh, trending towards the end of the year, so it's, it will take the time to look back on some of the biggest stories uh, we've discussed uh, as a group. But I think maybe we'll start with the uh, one we haven't really touched on a lot, actually, the missing and murdered Indigenous women inquiry. And we'll start here with Miranda. Your thoughts on, on what the Liberals and Justin Trudeau have launched? Well, um, it was a promise. It was an election promise that they would uh, deliver on the inquiry, one of the TRC calls to action. Um, I think there was expectations in the community about what the inquiry would be, mm -hmm. and it hasn't really turned out to be that way. So I think that expectations were really high, um, and delivery is kind of low. So um, what's actually going to happen with consultation starting in the new year will be interesting to see um, as the commissioners travel across the country and collect stories, but don't really have the ability to act on anything that they hear. I think that's the frustrating thing about it for a lot of people, right, is looking at it and finally we're going to start doing some truth-telling, right, which I think is an important, uh, important piece of work, but without any teeth to the inquiry, it's really hard to know where it's going to go, right? So, so we're going to tell all these stories, we're going to look at all these things, but what are the actions that are going to come out of it? And I think that's the real question right now. And, you know, I mean, it doesn't seem like there'll be any legal consequences, even if there are things unearthed uh, around police forces or things like that around inaction. Um, but is it going to result in serious, meaningful policy change? Uh, is it going to result in concrete action around education, training, changes in practice, all of those things? And I think that's the real question is, is you know, it's really nice to talk about these stories. And, and get the truth out into the light, but it's like so much of, uh, around the truth and reconciliation process, right? Truth telling is only so much, uh, only has so much meaning if you don't have action, you don't have reconciliation and in, in making change and in moving things forward. Well, and I think victims' families are um, wanted uh, direct results for what happened to them and what happened to their communities, and that's not going to be part of the inquiry. They're looking at systemic change, um, which may take a generation or two to see any results from. So that's heartbreaking for families who are still looking for their family members or don't have answers or there were never criminal charges in the cases. So um, a lot of those families are really disheartened by the approach that's being taken. Bridget, you use the word teeth. It lacks teeth. So what type of teeth? to use your word, would you like to see in this investigation? Well, I mean, I think, I think what we need is, you know, is some sort of serious consequences in some way for, we know there have been organizations and bodies where there's been inaction, right, where there's been a lack of, of addressing the issues, and, and it's very unclear right now whether there'll be any mechanism to, to respond to those, whether there'll be any disciplinary action in any of those cases. You know, if you have RCMP who've not acted on cases when they should have or things like that. Um, is there going to be any actual action to try to resolve some of these cases, right? So we may have information come forward, but, but where's that information go and what's going to happen? And without, without any teeth, right, without any serious consequences, then it's hard to understand what the purpose really is for people. Well, let's shift gears here and uh, bring it home uh, to just Alberta politics. We'll talk about Sandra Jansen. And we know that uh, she crossed the floor. She felt she was, uh, had, there was abusive behavior uh, directed towards her. She was taking a, a run at the leadership of the PCs. She moved across the floor. So I guess there's so many ways to attack approaches. But, you know, what did, what did we learn? What did we see? What did we hear with Sandra Jansen leaving for that reason? Well, I think for me, um, the idea of um, being attacked is so personal. People can be attacked by words that are said about actions from other people and someone else in the same room experience it might not have had the same okay. um, threat uh, or feeling of threat towards them. So um, I think it's really uh, difficult to not accept someone's re re reaction to it and not accept how they've experienced it. So I think that that's um, something across um, across society that we need to think about um, and um, only she knows how she felt and what what she experienced so um, I have to trust her judgment and we know that Sandra Jansen isn't alone in this right we've seen uh, increasing numbers of women from across the political spectrum as well as women who are um, you know in public and other ways coming forward and saying this is happening to me too right we just uh, just saw a group of three MLAs from Nova Scotia come forward. Uh, we recently saw another MLA from uh, Newfoundland come forward. I believe she was a Liberal MLA. Uh, we've seen uh, Michelle Rempel at the federal level talk about harassment that she's received. She's a Conservative woman, right? So this is not limited to one party uh, or to one province. And what we know is that, 
Yes, sometimes these are just words, but we've seen repeated incidents where those words have been taken to violent action, right? We saw uh, the shooting at Gabrielle Giffords. We saw the death of Joe Cox, right, that terrible murder. Um, we've seen, you know, the, you know, um, the uh, attempted... Uh, the attempted attack on Pauline Marois that resulted in the, the death of a, a um, technical staff member. And so these things do get taken to action. And so it's all very nice to say and for people to say, oh, you know, it's just words and women in politics need to grow a skin. But the reality is, is these things are resulting in the, the injury and death to women in politics and to the people around them. And we have to take it seriously. And I'm glad that Sandra Jansen's fueled the conversation here. Um, and I don't think that this is going to be a story that ends on uh, December 31st this year. You know, I find it interesting that, you know, we look at, let's say, 30 years ago. You know, if I wanted to communicate with uh, any public figure, I could either call them or send them a letter. That was really it. Now I can be, I'll use the word coward. I can be a coward and uh, at, uh, you know, whatever, red nose, whatever. And I can send my Twitter or my Facebook, or I guess Facebook, but, or I can send anonymous emails to whoever. Right. And, you know, I, I just, I don't know how you get around that. And, and I agree with you. They, you know, they, it's more than just words, but all these words are spoken. They're from, they're from it's, it's, it's cowardly in my opinion. Right. But how do you change that approach to whether, you know, to women or men that are directed in this, in this really cowardly way in my opinion? Well, I was actually watching um, the uh, uh, press conference that Rachel Notley and Sandra Jensen did to announce yeah. her crossing the floor on Facebook Live. So I was watching it and I was watching people comment um, and I couldn't believe the words that they were putting beside their pictures on Facebook of them with their kids and them with their families and the hateful things that they were saying. And I just think about, would you say this to your mother? Would you say it to your sister? Would you say it to your neighbor, to their face? No, probably not. And one of the things that we know about online bullying is that um, when it occurs, it's often because there's a screen in between. You don't see the emotional reaction of someone face to face, right? When you say something to someone's face, you see immediately the impact of your words. When people are online, they don't. And so how do we find a mechanism for people to understand that, that these things that they type have an impact? It's, it's hard to understand how we're going to change that. But one of the things we, we can change is we can have social media platforms respond more seriously to complaints about harassment and threats. And when you report one of these posts, so often I've reported things in the past, and so often you get a response back saying, this doesn't violate our community standards. And I'm thinking, yeah. how does this not violate community standards? You know, and people can talk about censorship all they want, but the reality is, is that Facebook and Twitter and all of these social media platforms are privately owned. Well, not privately owned, but they're, they're, yep. they're companies. They're not public space. Censorship is not a thing in private space. You know, the, those organizations and entities do have the right to control mm -hmm. how those platforms are used. And maybe they actually need to start doing so because it's gotten to the point where it's driving people away from the use of those tools. It's impacting exactly. Twitter's user numbers, you know. 100%. Couldn't agree more with you, Bridget. <laughs> now let's get to our uh, third and final topic of the evening, and we'll go down south. And the impact of uh, the first woman running for presidency, and Hillary Clinton failed in her attempt. Um, how does this shape, um, I guess, women in politics and just women in general moving forward? Well, for me as a budding politician, I think um, growing up, I never saw myself reflected in politics. I never saw someone who looked like me, someone who experienced what I experienced growing up. And so um, anytime someone from a different background, um, gender experience, um, cultural group steps forward and puts themselves in that public space, I think it inspires other people to say, I can do it too. Yeah, and I think... I think that sort of what happened around the campaign was one of the best examples of how, um, you know, somebody, you know, women have to be twice as good or even better at doing things uh, to be taken seriously at it. I mean, I don't, you know, whether or not you agree with her positions, there has not been a more qualified candidate for president in probably, you know, at least 50 years with the kind of resume and background, if not longer, the kind of background and experience and knowledge of what that job takes. I mean, I can't imagine that you would have anyone more qualified. Um, and for her to be defeated by someone who has no political experience and, and not even a basic ability to fact check the things that he's saying, or maybe just not, not caring about it, but it just sort of, it's a reminder that, you know, how hard women still have to work to be taken seriously in the political realm. Now we're running out of time, but I have to ask you both, with her campaign and the way it turned out and, and the way she was treated over that time, um, would this make people more likely or unlikely to run for president as a woman? 
in your opinions? Um, I think more likely. I think, um, I, I think there were a lot of people that were shocked by the way that she was treated and um, want to see good in the world and want to do better. I don't know. I, I have seen a lot of women, and not just around Hillary Clinton, but around the treatment of women in politics in general, who are women who I thought at one point were women who would want to run for office, and they're reconsidering. Right? And what I've been trying to tell those women is, you know, you, this is even more reason for you to put your name forward. This is sure. reason for, them to t to, for you to tell them, you don't get to scare me out of doing this. But I, I know there are women who have been reconsidering because of this current climate. Well, thanks for reviewing the last uh, 51 weeks, 50 some, <laughs> 52 weeks, 50 weeks. I'm my math's terrible, but fabulous stuff. Thanks a lot, ladies. Have a great week. Thank you. All right. We're